Bill goes down, grab it.
Thanks so much.
Il y a de la misère.
Voilà, il repartira plus. Il restera en haut, là. Reste en haut, on enverra les pompiers te chercher. Je vais faire un sourd, je vais faire le sourd de l'âge.
Special presentation. Hello, I'm Donna Friesen and welcome to snowy Montreal and our live coverage of the state funeral for Canada's 18th Prime Minister, Brian Mulroney. This represents, as former Quebec Premier Lucien Bouchard has said, a page turning in Canada's history. We are in Montreal, we're outside Notre Dame Basilica, that is where the service will be getting underway in about 30 minutes from now. The funeral cortege is on its way here now to Notre Dame from St. Patrick's Basilica, just a few blocks away from here. That's where Brian Mulroney's body has been lying in repose. People from all walks of life and political allegiances, of course, filing past to pay their respects. And there's just a, a Canadian scene in the snow, the RCMP Honor Guard. They're part of the cortege escorting the funeral cortege uh, to where we are, Notre Dame Basilica. This is a funeral, of course, for a political leader who was prime minister for nine years, but who stayed connected for so long after that to so many people. A man who soared to the highest political heights in this country and who also fell to the deepest depths. No one can dispute that Brian Mulroney was a man of consequence. And all the guests that we expect to see in the Basilica today, there are supposed to be about 1,600. They have been invited to be here. They will include the Governor General, Mary Simon, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, many other prominent Canadians and dignitaries, and not just people from politics. Uh, we'll see all sorts of people. Wayne Gretzky is going to be here. He will be one of the people giving a eulogy. And with me here are two people with decades of experience covering politics and involved in politics. Our senior national affairs correspondent, Eric Sorensen, is with me here. Hi, Donna, Eric. Good to be with you. As you say, what could be a more Canadian scene than yeah. the Mounties in the yeah. snow? Yeah. 
It is. It is very snowy here today, <laughs> as you can see. Honorable uh, Pamela Wallen is also here now, an independent senator, for, senator from Saskatchewan, also former consul general to New York and uh, former journalist who was CTV bureau chief, chief back when Brian Mulroney was prime minister. Yes, I'm feeling very at home today in yeah. the snow uh, from Saskatchewan. It's interesting. He was elected in uh, 1984 with a sweeping majority that few had predicted at that time. And as we look back over the last 40 years, he has changed this country and changed it for the better. Mm -hmm. He gave us our economic chops, if you will. We really uh, became a participant uh, on the world stage, economically speaking, and the free trade agreement was at the core of that. Yeah. Covering those negotiations every yeah. day, and complicated, you, you, controversial, but very and, consequential. And he was the instigator of all of that. And Pamela, you covered him from then, of yes. course, during those years, but you also kept in touch, and you saw him fairly recently. I saw him, and we had a chance to visit just in January. Of course, they had all the kids in Florida. He loves family. That's, mm. he, he talks to the grandkids every day, the children every day. And he was in, uh, in fine form, always fully engaged in both U.S. politics and Canadian politics. And at one moment, he leaned over and he said, so, Senator, how's that new independent Senate thing going? <laughs> right? With just a little <laughs> smile on his, his face. So it was a great moment. Mm. And uh, he lived and breathed it. Uh, right till the very end, mm -hmm. he'll be missed on the on the political stage because he stayed involved. Yeah, every yeah. prime minister since has called him for advice. Yeah, and, uh, including Justin Trudeau. You bet. And we should say that his uh, entire family is going to be here today. His four children, his 16 grandchildren, yeah. and of course his wife of almost 52 years, yeah. Mila Mulroney. And Eric, I know um, you have lots of memories of covering Brian Mulroney too. Can you just talk a bit about the sense of occasion here? Oh, the what sense, we're witnessing? The, the, it, it's, you know, we're, we were so caught up, I think, in the maelstrom of day-by-day -day news when we were covering him and his downfall as he went from the, that great majority that he had to being the lowest rated politician in Canadian history by 1993. And yet now, here we are, we've had three weeks as well to kind of remember more yep. about him and really to uh, assess uh, the impact and the transformational nature of, uh, of his policies and he is definitely being seen in a different light. I think the family has been uh, felt, has felt very warm towards how the Canadian public and the media coverage has kind of taken that view um, after all of these years to see that there was a lot accomplished by Brian Mulroney as Prime Minister. There's a real sense of nostalgia when, uh, when he was laying in state in Ottawa and here as well. Uh, in I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to interrupt for a quick yeah. sec to say that the Governor General yeah. there is yeah. now uh, paying her husband Whit Fraser, to meeting also uh, a longtime correspondent. <laughs> yes, that's right, Whit Fraser, uh, meeting um, <laughs> Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who's yeah. there as well for the funeral. Sorry to interrupt. No, I was just saying the, uh, and that's a perfect scene. The nostalgia that that we're all feeling is for, um, in a way, a kinder, gentler time. Brian Mulroney was very partisan, as are all. Uh, politicians, but it was always a respectful partisanship. Uh, and we, I think we're all longing for that time and that place where you could uh, be combative in the House of Commons, you could differ over issues like free trade or the GSD, but you were also there when people were in need or needed a phone call or a hand on their shoulder or just to go and have dinner and a visit. And, and those days are Mm -hmm. uh, it's not what we're experiencing right now. You know, I was going to say, as I was watching guests before we came on air arrive at the Basilica, I thought, wouldn't he have loved to be in there talking to those people, oh, right? This, because no. he would have had a personal connection to all of the people who yep. were going to see at this yep. funeral. Well, I was talking to Derek Burney, his man in Washington and one of the architects of free trade uh, yesterday. And the thing that struck him about these last few weeks is just uh, how much his reputation was almost restored over these three weeks. Oh, and, that, yeah. and then he laughed and said, uh, well, Rooney would have loved it. Yeah. So. Well, I think he would have because we also have now, as I say, it's been 40 years since that election. We have the perspective. I'll just tell you one story. When, when I was in New York as Canadian Consul General after 9-11, if we had not had that free trade agreement in place uh, because the Americans were 
they wanted to build walls everywhere uh, at that point for security and trade reasons. If we had not had his personal connection with so many Americans, we would have been in very, very deep trouble, economically speaking. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't have anticipated that. None of us could. But, but when you see the benefit is of his policies over these years, it explains, I think, why while well, we're looking mm -hmm. at him through a different lens. And, and it showed his capacity over those years to change and to mm -hmm. learn. He was not a free trader when he won the leadership. Oh, yeah. that, was, that was Peter Pocklington who was, <laughs> and Pocklington yeah. got 3% of the leadership vote. Well, and liberals vote. way back when. Yeah. Donald yeah. McDonald brought forward the yep. commission report that actually began to inform Mulroney's view on free trade. And he changed yeah. his view. He changed his yeah. view. He changed yeah. his views on Indian, uh, in uh, indigenous affairs. Yes. You know? He became much more open to the idea of self-government. Yeah. That wasn't on, <laughs> part of the policy thing thinking early in his mandate. Yeah. No, and putting us on the world stage again on issues like the, the acid rain treaty with the Americans and profoundly important, convincing Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan, who ha were his friends, that they needed to change their thinking around sanctions and around apartheid. And it was Nelson Mandela who recognizes you know, uh, and stated it that Brian Mulroney was a hero. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I covered Changed Mandela the view. when he came to Ottawa in, I think it was the spring of 1990, one of the first international trips he took mm -hmm. after 27 years yeah. in prison right. uh, was to see Brian Mulroney and to thank him for his leadership because he recognized that he really did carry the freight on that to, to pull Thatcher and Reagan, who yes. were conservatives, yes. and they, and they wanted to maintain an yep. economic relationship mm -hmm. with South Africa. Mm -hmm. And Reagan er, and Mulroney, Mr. Mulroney, thought there was something bigger at stake here. He believed it was the right thing to do. It was yeah. a morally right he, thing to he do. Was, yeah. He was, in retrospect, so bold. Um, and, and I think, Eric, you've used the word that he was transformative. And, and it's an interesting combination because all of that transactional behavior, those relationships that he built and, and worked on all of the time, is what in the end allowed him to be so transformational for our country because he, it was based on friendships and personal relationships and picking up the phone and saying, why won't you do a free trade agreement with your biggest partner mm. and closest neighbor? And those kinds of things worked. It mm -hmm. was, uh, it's quite astounding when you look in retrospect. And the, you don't personal, always have, the personal relationships really matter, oh. right? The, in politics? He, he thought, I think he was feeling pretty bold and pretty confident yep. when uh, it was time for Meech Lake because he, yep. was, he was the consummate deal maker. And if yep. he couldn't do it, nobody was going to do it. And of course, nobody has tried to do it since yes. because yeah. they recognize that you have to run the table on yep. every possible opposition yeah. to it. But he, he took that chance on it to try yeah. to bring Quebec back within the Constitution to recognize distinct society. It, uh, it, it just wasn't going to fly. It was very hard to reconcile how Albertans felt and how Quebecers felt right. when you started to push the question on them. Yeah. I'm just going to uh, describe what we're seeing here. So yeah. we're watching the funeral procession head from St. Patrick's Basilica here in Montreal. It's about a, a thousand meters or so to... Uh, the Basilica behind me, Notre Dame Basilica. That's where the service will take place. That's where all the guests are now in place. And we're watching the, uh, the hearse carrying the casket of Brian Mulroney. Uh, beside the hearse, um, an RCMP honor guard marching beside it. And we've seen the mounted um, RCMP as well who are taking part in this service. There's also a Canadian Forces honor guard. And you can hear the bagpipes of the band. I was speaking to uh, a, a liaison for the Mulroney family mm -hmm. who was dealing with the federal government, the Trudeau team, and he said they were beyond uh, thankful for uh, just how grand and, and helpful the Trudeau and the government has been during this, these last three weeks. And when, when Trudeau spoke, uh, there wasn't a hint of politics in anything he said. Well, I think uh, the Prime Minister knows what, it, what the Mulroney children are going through. Mm -hmm. um, to lose a father and to lose a father in such a public circumstance. Uh, so I know there'll be empathy there. And watching the Mulroney children, they're not. I call them citizens now because they were so <laughs> well raised and well trained. But to watch them, uh, along with their mother, stand for hours on end as the public came to pay their respects. Everybody had a story. Everybody had a picture that they'd once taken with, uh, with Brian Mulroney. And Mila, who was his true partner in politics and in life, uh, and, and 
the way they raised those children. Yeah. They stood, they engaged with every single person. It was expected hours. they would take breaks during exactly. the, uh, when, when the visitations were happening, but Neela Mulroney yep. felt that she wanted to be there oh, yeah. for all of it and yeah. for everybody. Yeah. And, and she told the kids, yeah. no, no, we'll be here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's still the matriarch. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. But uh, those children are amazing. Um, our Mercedes Stevenson is helping us with our coverage today as well, and she spoke to a number of guests as they headed into the Basilica for the service. Mr. McKenna, we're here today to remember Brian Mulroney as, as a nation, but you were also a friend of his. <clears throat> what are you reflecting on as you walk into the grandeur of this church and the state funeral for Brian Mulroney? He would have loved this. He, he would have absolutely loved this, uh, and, uh, and, and it's a tribute uh, that, that is not just being uh, demonstrated here, but all across the country. Uh, he, would have, he would have really appreciated uh, the fact that so many people cared about his legacy. And what I remember about him is that he, he, he accomplished things large and small. The small acts of kindness. Somebody once uh, said that the phone for him was the Stradivarius, and he sure used it like that. Uh, but also the big things, the free trade and acid rain and, uh, uh, and the uh, harmonized sales tax, all of those things, those were large accomplishments, big footprints in the sand. So we'll always remember them, but hundreds, thousands of Canadians will remember small acts of kindness. He was always there for people when they were grieving or in moments of great joy. And we certainly think of him and his family today and, and you as one of his friends. Thank you so much for stopping to talk with us. Thank you, Mercedes. Bye. All right, Mercedes Stevenson. Uh, outside Notre Dame Basilica. And our Mike Armstrong uh, is just a few blocks away from where we are, closer to St. Patrick's Basilica. That's where the funeral cortege began uh, earlier today, setting out uh, on this route to begin the funeral. The Mulroney family who has, as we've talked about, stood in the receiving line uh, for four days at the former Prime Minister's side as he makes this final journey. Mike, what do you have with you? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, when that cortege left St. Patrick's Basilica, uh, probably about 20 minutes ago now, very somber scene, uh, probably more somber because it almost felt private. I mean, there were barely any people here at all uh, the weather has obviously made it a very uncomfortable uh, place to be today. I've covered funerals in the past where there are big crowds outside, but the weather seems to have kept a lot of people away, as well as the security. People are being kept far away from uh, both this basilica and the basilica where you are, Donna. Um, so it, it's given it probably an even more somber feel today, I would say. Yeah, I would agree with that, Mike. And um, the snow, it, it strikes me, is as uh, adds something to to the occasion it makes it it, it does it, we're just watching yeah. uh, behind us here the honor guards the members of the canadian armed forces the rcmp both mounted and on the on the ground walking it, it is such a uh, a powerful moment we see the honorary pallbearers are lined up we know that the the moment is close and then it becomes so much more final Uh, the honorary pallbearers will be uh, assembling in just a few yes, minutes. Yes, they're, some of the they're behind us there, can... right outside. You can see them lined up, waiting for the... The sound of the drum is always... Good. Right, does something for me. It's very evocative. The RCAF band, Air Force Colors. For security purposes, they had uh, like the 1,600 that are inside. Many of them were there like three hours ahead of time oh, yeah. because they had to assemble in a secure location first and then be brought into this area just to yeah. be, you know, 100% It's modern sure. times. Even coming over here, we all have our bags checked and yeah. all of that. It's yeah. a, it's I saw a some of the world. guests as they were arriving. Um, there was uh, some former, former premiers, former Premier Christy Clark. Right. I saw arrive former... Um, ambassador to uh, the United States, David McNaughton, Peter McKay, and his father, Elmer yeah. McKay. Bob Ray was Bob here. Bob Ray, so. Conrad Black, Barbara Emile. This I is we're what told we're that Ryan Reynolds has just oh, gone yes, into the I'm, Basilica I'm sure, as well. and David Foster, David who is Foster. one of the uh, 
it's, honorary Paul Bears, it, it, but this it, it, was his range. It's I've so, had, it's, as the uh, as the hearse goes behind us, they uh, it's so poignant to see yeah. these old political war horses yes. who were young men in their primes at the time. Absolutely. Um, some of them have outlived him, and and some predeceased him. Yeah. You know? That was the thing as we were talking about all of this, that he spoke at so many people's funerals, uh, all his G7 partners, but they are gone. They are gone. And yeah. now the last one has fallen. He gave eulogies at Ronald Reagan's funeral, right? right? Margaret Thatcher's funeral. Absolutely. Yeah. And now George we're Bush, watching... George Bush Sr. Yeah, George, George Bush, Bush Sr. They had a very close relationship. But the group today, are, they have all... Um, been in each other's lives, touched each other's yeah. lives. 1984, great year for both Brian Mulroney and Wayne Kresge. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they, they, they both they were at their peak for those few years. Like exactly. Mulroney had the two majorities from 84 yeah. and 88, and Gretzky won four Stanley Cups in yeah. those uh, four to five and years. And he went. That's what Brian Mulroney did when he was negotiating free trade, and he would turn to the famous Canadians that lived in the United States and say, I need you all. You're ambassadors now. You need to do your work. And these relationships, or with David Foster, they worked together on fundraising for cystic fibrosis. That was a very big issue for Mila. And they worked together on launching Michael Bublé's career. And Michael Bublé's career as well. That I think, is it, was, I think it was Bill Fox I saw on your podcast, yeah. uh, Pamela. Like, he talked I, about uh, Reagan's, uh, or sorry, Mr. Mulroney's ability to recognize what he needs to do in the future. So he's going down to see President Reagan, right. but he made a point that, yeah, we're going to see the vice president too. Exactly. And nobody else had that in mind. He yeah. knew that that was going to be an important relationship and later. And it was, we now he became president. We're now seeing the uh, RCMP uh, pallbearers preparing to carry the casket from the hearse. And uh, removing their hats before they do Dilla that. and Carolyn are standing there. And you can't quite see it in the shot, but there are a row of, two rows of honorary pallbearers. Just up the stairs. Just yeah. up the stairs, yeah. who will... Uh, Mila and Carolyn are standing just off to the uh, other side of the RCMP officers as they collect the hats. The rest of the kids have now arrived with their partners. Many are, family. you know, the, the pallbearers there, former business partners, right. lawyers, friends, mostly conservatives, but uh, Yves Fortier is there, the Yves former Fortier. diplomat, and Mulroney called him, you know, he was a top courtroom lawyer, but he also said of him, hey, his, his only defect was he was a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> and with humor, he always made those particular yeah. comments, too, but, uh, yeah, it's quite a, a quite a list of people, Paul Demery Jr., as you say, Yves Fortier, Michel Carger. Derek Burney, who was so central to the free trade negotiations and, and was our yeah. ambassador there. Bernie, Bill Fox, a lifelong friend and advisor. Burney said uh, they called each other the Bay Boys because Mulroney <laughs> was from Bay Como yeah. and Burney was from Thunder Bay. Yeah. <laughs> and they felt they had kind of similar backgrounds, you know, yeah. the kind of mill towns on the water. He surrounded himself always with people, and this is the mark of, of strength of character in a leader. He surrounded himself with people who told him the truth and it made him a better leader for it. And he was able to change his views on things Absolutely. as a result, right? He could evolve and not be we, stuck we in We don't one let politicians do that. We say yeah. if they yeah. have a new thought that somehow they've changed their mind. Yeah. We want them to have new thoughts and yeah. bring new things on. Even with the GST, I mean, he had to do that. It was an integral part of the free trade negotiations. There they are. Is that Caroline? I believe under no, the umbrella, is, or is no, that, that Jessica? Is, that's, yeah, Jessica. That's Jessica and, and the grandchildren. Yeah. And the RCMP poll bearers moving into position. <laughs> Mila and, and uh, Carolyn are at the front of the gang to see all the young kids gathered there. You know, I talked to Ben Mulroney uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. He said that um, his mother has taken a lot of strength from this, the last four days, and receiving yeah. all of these people who came to pay their respects, and that rather than it being emotionally draining, it was actually energizing, energizing. for her and for, and for the kids because they, they saw how much uh, Brian Mulroney meant to these that, people. That's and what Mark said the other day. He said, I thought I knew everything about yeah. my dad, but the stories that people have told, yeah. uh, and that, those, the, the, those small gestures that he all, with the phone calls that he made, and, and that's who was coming. Uh, passed and explained to the family that he had touched their lives. Yeah. Let's just what, what a watch this, this is, moment eh? play out. 
This is the day that it becomes yeah, final. That is something else that Ben told me is that he thought after this service is when they the energy will deplete and it will be and they will need each other. They'll have a private burial in a cemetery in Montreal mm -hmm. and uh, that will be very quiet yeah. I imagine for them and, and it will all be coming down for them. And this is their uh, gift and give back to the country and that's what what needs to happen with a, a former prime minister, but Stop. they are a family Stop. and they need their private Stop. moment too. Stop. Stop. The casket now being carried by Stop. RCMP pallbearers past the Stop. two lines Stop. of honorary pallbearers. These people on both sides, as we've said, old friends, political allies, business people, former chief of staff, lawyers. Pierre, Carl, Pelado. I mean, there are yeah. things about yeah. uh, watching people and their political stripes kind of shift around a little bit. <laughs> Pelado was a great example of that. And, yeah. Uh, he, he, he always saw the uh, what was amusing in, uh, in the world in which he operated yeah. for all those years. Well, I was talking to Bill Fox about this, as you said, Eric, on the podcast. Well, Bill was a young reporter covering uh, Brian Mulroney when he was the co-chair of the Cliche Commission into uh, controversy in the construction. So these friendships go back decades and decades. It's, it's a real tribute to him. And there, that was the family entering behind the casket. There's the first shots we're seeing inside. Notre Dame Basilica. So beautiful. So beautiful. Just grand. Yes. Fits the moment. We're expecting about 1,600 guests to be there. And there will be five eulogies today and an address by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And the first eulogy will be from Brian Mulroney's daughter, Caroline herself a politician. Ben, ben was talking about it. He said that he listened to it because they, they rehearsed these things a little bit. Mm -hmm. He said he was in tears yeah. listening to what she was preparing to say. And that will be clearly the most moving, I think, eulogy that you could have from a daughter. Well, she inherits the, the political mantle. They've, the kids represent everything, right? They've yes. gone off into the business world. They have become entrepreneurs. Nick, the youngest one, is a baker, you know. Yeah. Uh, a te television host. And a television host, and Carolyn uh, took up politics, and I yeah. think that was always a special, a special bond between them. And she's responsible for francophone affairs, uh, yeah. you know, in the Ontario government of Doug Ford, and that's just one of the things that uh, you know people who grew up in politics and in Quebec, yeah. uh, they saw the importance of the yeah. two languages and to be able to speak both. There, there's some full circle moments here. Yeah. This. This will be a Catholic service, of course, Notre Dame Basilica, a Catholic Basilica. You're listening to Marie Jose Lord, a soprano. Now there will be music, there will be prayer, there will be liturgy. Let's just listen for a moment. Oh! <laughs> 
the casket moving slowly through the church now. You can see the family just behind it, Mila Mulroney, wife of Brian Mulroney, by his side for 51 years now, right behind him as he makes this final journey. It's hard not to be choked up listening to Marie Jose Lord and uh, at this moment with those pictures. Mila was his most trusted and I think some of us would say smartest political advisor. She always knew what was right oh, for him. There she is. She's holding hands with some of her grandchildren, 16 yeah. grandchildren. The late, uh, the late Premier uh, Phil Davis in Ontario once told Brian Mulroney, Mila Mulroney is going to get you more votes than you will get for yourself. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> and she did. <laughs> and and she, I don't know that I've ever seen her in an undignified moment. No. Uh, never put a foot wrong. Never loses her cool. That's a lot of years yeah. to, to, to not make a And especially through mistake. difficult times. Uh, now to leads him to you. Welcome All right, this him is into the, brightness the Archbishop of Montreal who will be leading the service. And may your love be for us light on the road until the day you gather us to you forever and ever. Amen. The Archbishop of Montreal will be leading this service as Grace Christian Lepin. As I said, this is a, a Catholic service. Brian Mulroney, of course, raised as an Irish Catholic in Baie Homo, Quebec. Um, Notre Dame Cathedral, uh, just uh, an incredible building, centerpiece in Montreal. And look at this glorious scene. It really is. The casket just passed. I saw Joe Clark. And, and you mm -hmm. think about the interesting relationships that were there, but certainly his is one of the most. Mm -hmm. You know, they were both 36, not quite 37, yep. when they tried for the leadership and in Joe, 1976. And, and Joe won. won. And Brian Mulroney yeah. later said he was the unlucky one because neither of us was ready for that job. <laughs> it was, uh, we, we all hate to confess our age, but when I first moved to Ottawa as a young reporter, my first big political event covering was the 1976 Conservative leadership with Joe Clark won, which yeah. Brian Mulroney lost, and then again in, uh, in 1983. But you see just the course of history, and I had a long conversation with Joe Clark on Thursday night, and, and we talked about all of the changes that, have, that we have seen in this country, many of them at the hand of Brian Mulroney, once a rival but respected political uh, partnerships. Mulroney owed a lot to Clark. Like he mm. came in as a you know um, inexperienced leader and not much in the way of experience in government. And you could see that he dipped back into that short-lived Clark government to yeah. find many in his cabinet. You know, like well, John Joe Wise Clark, was his agriculture right. for Clark, agriculture for uh, Joe Clark for was Mulroney. one of Canada's best foreign ministers yeah. ever. Mazinkowski. Yeah. yeah. Strength from the West as well. Don Mazinkowski was a very Flora powerful McDonald, force. You know, that, was a, that was a Clark choice, and she became yeah. an important figure in the Mulroney government. Well, and, so and he, he respected and recognized and promoted women again uh, long before that was the in thing to do, a little like the environment. He was way ahead and on many files. And respected his foes, his political foes. Exactly. He saw the importance that they could play. If they, could yeah. be, if they, were, if they had talent, Yep. and they could be loyal, he was not going to shut them out. And that's what we saw with Clark in foreign affairs. Yep. Uh, Jean Charest, who backed Clark and was yes. just a kid at the time. This beautiful sweeping shot of St. Patrick's Basilica. Let's listen in to the stars. If we are gathered here today in this church, it is to surround with our affection, our sympathy and friendship, those who are in sorrow, 
I'm thinking in particular of Mila Mulroney, the wife of Brian Mulroney, former Prime Minister of Canada, and his four children, Caroline, Benedict, Mark, and Nicholas, and their family, and to the many friends and colleagues. Nous voulons affirmer ensemble que tous ces liens d'amitié et d'affection que nous tissons tout au long de notre vie ne s'arrêtent pas make throughout our entire lives do not stop with death. Je voudrais saluer les dignitaires présents aujourd'hui. I would like to greet all the dignitaries that are present today, including Her Excellency, the very honorable Nice Governor of General Canada, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, the Honourable Manon Janot, Lieutenant Governor of Quebec, the Honourable François Legault, Premier of Quebec, to their colleague and colleagues of the international community, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Before we continue with this celebration, I will invite you to hear the testimony. No one gave a speech like my dad. With his beautiful baritone voice, his sense of humor, and his impeccable timing, my dad held an audience in the palm of his hand. Speeches were such a major part of his life that he told us that when it was his turn to go up to what he called that great political rally in the sky, he wanted us to bury him with his podium. He had a unique style, which included telling stories that he honed over the years. My favorite 
was of a former conservative prime minister who, at a formal dinner, had insisted on a second pat of butter for his bread. Despite the waiter's insistence on adhering to the rule of one pat of butter per person, Mr. Diefenbaker thundered, excuse me, but do you know who I am? I am the Prime Minister of Canada, and I would like another pat of butter, please. My father grinned as he delivered the waiter's response. Do you know who I am? I'm the person who hands out the butter. <laughs> My dad told this and other stories not just to get a laugh, but to make the point that the man who hands out the butter matters just as much as the Prime Minister. Because to dad, everyone mattered. The prophet Isaiah said, Consider the rock from which you were cut, the quarry from which you were dug. While my dad's Irish heritage was the rock from which his character was cut, Bécomo, Quebec, his hometown, was the quarry from which it was dug. At Bécomo, le travail acharné était un mode de vie. His Malgré des moyens limités, mes grands-parents avaient décidé qu'il n'y aurait aucune limite à ce que leur fils pouvait faire. Que leur no limite to what their son could accomplish. But not everything was easy. Une direction And his life could have gone in a completely à different ans, direction. Alors que la situation At 16, de la famille était when the financial situation of the family was particularly difficult, My father proposed to his own father to register in the program to become a laborer at the plant. He probably would have had a good life, but he would not, he would not have accomplished his destiny. My grandfather knew that, and he refused that offer. He decided instead to make his working day longer so that his son could go to university. Very aware of this privilege, my father made it a duty to honor the sacrifices that allowed him to serve causes that were larger than he was. My grandfather died when my father was only 25. From that moment on, my father took care of the family. He took care of his mother, of his brother, and his sisters. Alors que sa carrière d'avocat prenait son envol. While his career as a lawyer started, he met the love of his life. His best advisor and his partner for what was the most important in his eyes, family and politics. In perfect harmony, they managed together and successfully they were able to uh, get those two passions together. There was a destiny attached to my father that even in his youth, no one could deny. Even Prime Minister Diefenbaker, at the peak of his powers, wrote a letter to my grandfather, extolling his son's potential after his first encounter with my dad. When I was a little girl, I had a sense that my father was a great man. He seemed to know everyone. They knew him, and they wanted to be around him. Prime Minister Clark attended Mark's christening. My dad did important work, like serving on the Cliche Commission and leading an international mining company. And in what, to my very young eyes, seemed like the pinnacle of importance, dad acted as Grand Marshal of the Montreal St. Patrick's Day Parade. My dad went on to win the leadership of the Progressive Conservative Party. When asked to comment on the significance of his election on the night of his victory, my father's first response was not what the journalists expected. It's Caroline Mulroney's ninth birthday, he exclaimed, on national television. At a moment of great achievement, he showed the country what his family meant to him. 
He became a truly great prime minister and a world leader. But to us, he was more than that. He was a truly great father. As his only daughter, he always made me feel special. He was the one who carried me to bed and stayed with me when I fell asleep until I fell asleep when I was little. The one who let me cry on his shoulder even when my tears ruined his beautifully pressed shirts when I was a teenager. And the one who waited for me at our table at our restaurant in New York City when I worked there patiently reading his stack of newspapers until I arrived, always with a glass of champagne waiting for me. Every day of my life, my dad told me that I was the greatest daughter that God put on this earth. Now, we all know how much he liked hyperbole. But how lucky am I that for almost 50 years, I was told something so wonderful every single day. He gave me love, confidence, and strength. Spending time with him was a joy. We would sit in his den and talk for hours. The news was always on in the background, and we would discuss it for sure, but mostly we talked about life. He set no course for his children, other than to support our dreams, aspirations, and happiness. But he didn't always make it easy. When Andrew asked my father for my hand in marriage, Andrew said, Mr. Mulrooney, I would like to ask your permission to propose to Caroline. My father looked at Andrew and asked, propose what? <laughs> My decision to enter politics was a thoroughly discussed topic. My father was not immediately in favor of the idea because he knew well the hardships of being the man in the arena. I leaned on him for political advice. Now, Caroline, he cautioned me, because you are my daughter, people will ask you to do lots of things, fundraisers here, events there. But do not forget the three most important things. You're riding, you're riding, you're riding. The people of York Simcoe elect you, put their faith in you, and it is to them that you are accountable. Au fil des ans, son instinct politique n'a rien perdu de son acuité. His political instinct did not diminish at all. He advised me to not waste my political capital for issues that were minor and without consequences, but to keep it for causes and issues that were truly significant. Life is short. That's what he was. Life is short. That's what he was saying very often. But our legacy will endure. His words were of great support, particularly when I was given the Francophone Affairs issue within the government of Ontario. To answer to the challenges that I met, my father encouraged me to stay on course and to put in practice one of his favorite sayings. Just a little bit. De lever un coin du rideau de l'histoire to peek around Marchant the corner of history just a little bit, following the steps of the one who uh, defended the right of Francophone minorities. As soon as he entered parliament, I was given the task of protecting the Francophone my community in Ontario. Stories just as remarkable as my own. My dad was immensely proud that his sons had built careers that they loved. He took such great joy watching Ben take center stage on TV, and he loved hearing him on the radio. He marveled at how Mark climbed his way up the corporate ladder, and later in life, Dad relied more and more on Mark for counsel, which was such a compliment to Marco. And Nicholas amazed my father as he took a leap to follow his dream, become an entrepreneur, and build a successful company. All three of them have matured into wonderful, loving fathers 
in our dad's image. My dad frequently told me how proud he was of them and the family lives that they built, which he said is the most important thing in life. He relished his role as papa to 16 grandchildren. He was playful and affectionate. He spoiled them with so much candy. He played with them in the pool and he showered them with encouragement and love. Mon père était aussi un ami sincère et fidèle. So, a sincere friend, a loyal friend, even if his Irish charm attracted everybody to him. He remained loyal to all his friends during the good days as much as when the storm was raging out there. This is why those friendships were so deep and why they endured. They were part of his life. This loyalty also found itself in the profound respect that he always had for Quebec. I will not surprise anybody by saying that Canada was under his skin. But his idea of Canadian federalism was many. The distinct characteristic of Quebec was for him a source of unity. And in spite of the fact that his four children and 16 grandchildren lived somewhere else, the idea would never have come to him to leave the province where he was born. Quebec, Quebec was home to him. No matter the crisis he was facing or wherever he was around the world, there was never a day, not one, when my brothers and I did not speak with our father. Sweetie, it's your old daddy calling, he would say. Thousands, thousands of people have shared stories about his phone calls. They said that they, have, that they felt that they had been touched, not just, just by someone who changed the course of history, but by an exceptionally kind, thoughtful, and generous person who often reached out when they needed to be lifted up. My dad saw the world in a bigger way than most. His humanity defined him which is why he transcended politics and connected with people in a way that left an indelible mark on their hearts and souls. In our grief, our family is comforted and so grateful for the universal outpouring of affection and admiration for what my father meant to them and to Canada. While he didn't care for polls, he did like good headlines. And those of the past few weeks would have pleased him immeasurably. He didn't build a tight-knit family or achieve what he did in politics on his own. He did it all, every step of the way with my mother. He fell head over heels for her beauty, but he loved her strength. Your mother is a fighter, he would tell us. He marveled at her street smarts valued her loyalty, and respected her judgment implicitly. Theirs was a true and equal partnership. Together for 51 years, they were a political powerhouse. They achieved the unimaginable in their private and public lives because they did everything together. On his last day, my dad called out to my mother from his hospital bed and said, Mila, what have you got lined up for me today? <laughs> Mom leaned over his bed and said, Darling, what would you like me to line up for you? Notten, he replied, which was his funny way of saying the word nothing. <laughs> then I will line up Notten, she said. Ever hopeful, Mum put her hands on his cheeks and said, Oh, Brian, are you coming back to me? His body was tired, but his heart would not let him give us up. So Dad looked at Mum, and with what were his final words to her, he said, I plan to. 
We are heartbroken by our loss. We adored him. I miss you, Daddy. La dernière fois que j'ai parlé ici à la basilique Notre-Dame de Montréal, that I spoke uh, right here in the Notre Dame Basilica uh, in Montreal was 24 years ago during the funeral of my own father. So very naturally today, my thoughts are going toward the children of Brian, Ben, Marc, Nicolas, and Caroline, who just uh, spoke so. Uh, eloquently and touchingly Brian of her father. For Marbonnet everybody, Brian Marbonnet was vous, Mr. Um, Prime Minister, but for you, he was Daddy. Sûr, Mila, and of course, for Mila, he was a spouse, a confident, a partner, somebody whose confidence could not Brian be shaken. once quipped that at l'Université Laval, there was no PM 101 class to prepare him for his future role. Although after he left politics, if such a class existed, he would have been the ideal person to teach it. One of his first lessons would be that winning is important and it's okay to enjoy it. However, winning for winning's sake cannot be the only end game. First and foremost, Brian was motivated by service. He was motivated by leadership, by getting the big things right. Big things like free trade, fighting to raise the standard of living for Canadians and for millions of people, first through the Canada-US FTA and then through NAFTA. Big things like standing up against apartheid in South Africa, as a great persuader, Brian leveraged Canada's position in the Commonwealth to lead the efforts that helped free Nelson Mandela. Brian also accomplished great things for the environment. Brian also accomplished great things for the environment, among other things, to fight against acid rains and to repair the uh, ozone layer hole. That showed that for Brian, the sky was not the limit. He led us with the ambition necessary to actually fix the sky. Oui, il voyait grand. Mais le petit yes, he can, so, he can see big things. But the little guy from Bécomo knew how to keep it both his feet strongly on the ground, whether it was uh, having long shifts as a, a worker or a trucker to pay for his studies, or to negotiate a free trade agreement with the most powerful country in the world. He was working just as hard in both cases. None brought him more pride and joy than the loving family he built with Mila, rooted in values of hard work, gratitude and resilience. Resilience being particularly important because, as his opponents knew well, Brian was never afraid to take on a fight, even though he knew that there would be criticism and attacks that stung. His family saw that up close. But as he put it himself, leaders must have vision and they must find the courage to fight for the policies that will give that vision life. Leaders must govern not for easy headlines in 10 days, but for a better Canada in 10 years. 
And even when times got tough, Brian always stayed generous, charming, and very funny. He once shared a story about the time he offered comfort to Ronald Reagan, who was enduring a decline in his approval ratings by saying, Ron, I don't know how to break this to you, but Margaret Thatcher, Helmut Kohl, and I combined don't have your 59% approval rating. <laughs> we all know how Brian loved to win, yet his most cherished victories were nonpartisan. Those moments where the true winner was Canada itself, because he loved this country with all his heart. And he didn't just love Canada in the abstract sense, he loved Canadians. He loved hearing their stories. He loved connecting with people. And he was incredibly generous with everyone. In fact, while we were reminiscing this past week, my mom shared with me that he had reached out to her occasionally over the decades to have friendly, heartfelt conversations. I had had no idea, but I was not surprised because this authenticity in his many conversations with me and in his advice to me is something I always deeply valued. Brian me conseillait souvent pendant qu'on renégociait l'ALENA. me often while we were renegotiating NAFTA in moments of great uncertainty, in the middle of a particularly difficult week, he encouraged me to stay on course. I can still hear him saying to me on the phone, Justin, remember what your father was saying. It is at the end of the evening that we recognize the best dancers. It was a lesson about discipline, determination, and also of perseverance. Today, it's the end of the evening for a giant. But we will always remember that uh, he was a great dancer and a great choreographer, and he managed to open the way for many generations to come. It is the end of an evening for a giant, but the music will continue. And in his memory, it, it is up to us in our own ways to continue the work toward a Canada which will be always more ambitious and always better. Thank you.
Maroni. Caroline. Caroline. Ben. Marc. Ben. Nicolas. Marc. Nicholas. Très nombreux amis de M. Mulroney réunis ici. To all the many friends of Brian Mulroney who are gathered here with us. And on all television. Mr. Mulroney here today to celebrate his accomplishment for this country and for all of us. J'aimerais tout d'abord I would like first of all dire que je me to tell you that I consider myself extremely Monsieur privileged Maroney. to have known Mr. Maroney. Il fut un, un modèle, he was a model, a role model, and an example not only personnel. in business, but also in my Je personal life. I would even say that uh, he probably even inspired me to have a wonderful family just as his was. My granddaughter, Mary, who is finishing her law studies and who will go to work in a great lawyer's office in Montreal. Um, my last little one, the small angel, Gabriel. Mr. Moroni, he was an inspiration. I can also count on a spouse Pascal, my beautiful Pascal, who is also an exceptional mother. Eu un papa aussi inspirant que I had a father just as inspiring as Mr. Moroni. You also have to know that uh, Mr. Moroni is a young lawyer, un cabinet, ici à Montréal, arriving in a great uh, lawyer's office right here a in Montreal. La première convention he negotiated the first convention of the uh, Journal de Montréal, the collective agreement, which was uh, the source of the success of Québecor. And he was still there around the year 2000. During this important transaction, uh, he called it a transformational negotiation, and it allowed Québecor to position itself uh, from the old to the new economy. It was quite a challenge, and what luck I had to be able to count on the presence of Mr. Mulroney in this regard. To me, Mr. Mulroney was the second father. He always knew where he was coming from. It is funny to know that we at Quebec are through our pulp and paper business, Donahue, many years ago, we were the owners of the paper mill in, as he used to say, Bucomo, where Mr. Mulroney's father worked and was able to make it possible for his son to get a great education. From modest origin, he was looking to build something that would last and would make it possible for all Canadians to live in peace and prosperity. And for this purpose, he knew that we would need to build a strong economy, largely supported by solid corporations. As a labor lawyer, and as everywhere thereafter, he was fair and knew everybody needed to have a good deal out of a transaction. As a CEO, he knew corporate responsibilities should not serve only shareholders but should serve all stakeholders. And as chairman of Quebec, he was a tremendous source of inspiration and courage. His sense of humor was an integral part of his magic. For Mr. Mulroney, we were the best managers. We were the best directors. We were 
the best born. And obviously and accordingly, he was the best German. <laughs> and as his proverbial formula he used to say, grâce à qui? Grâce Thanks to who? À l'Union Nationale. Thanks to the National Union. Ceux qui ont eu euh, le privilège de le côtoyer le savent. Those who had the privilege to, to know him know that his life was built around profound values. And at the top of those values, we loyauté. found loyalty. Nous savions que nous we knew toujours compter sur lui. that we would Peu always be able to count on him, regardless of circumstances. Even, in the toughest, and as the expression goes, the darkest moments. In his last days, when I was talking over the phone with him, he remained optimistic that he would get better and would be with us at our next annual meeting this spring. My first and second father were both people who were not working only for their own success but for the betterment of as many people as possible. They were here to build a better society. Mr. Mulroney and I did not see the future of Canada the same way, but never did it interfere with our ongoing relationship. We both wanted to build a better world. It is keeping building this better world that Mr. Mulroney, with great courage, took over the fight to end the despicable regime of apartheid and the liberation of Nelson Mandela. To me, this is his greatest achievement. Tout récemment, l'informant que mon ami Guy Fournier était Atteint du cancer. Uh, in, informing him that my friend Guy Fournier had cancer. Without waiting, Brian Mulroney called him to encourage him. Il était, that il was Brian Mulroney. He was, and he's Combien always there. Moi, lui et moi avons parlé article publié dans How many times de Toronto, he and I talked about a article from a large article in the Toronto Journal, uh, something that looked like a eulogy for Quebec or for a little while after it was acquired. And of course, the blame was falling on me. I never forgot uh, the response cite. that he gave to the author of this article. And I quote He's here. A young guy carrying enormous burdens. No one likes being criticized. The market had tanked. Times are tough. When we would come to this, which we will, the principal reason will have been the drive and the vision of Pierre-Carl Pelladeau. Mr. Mulroney, ses discours d'encouragement de De soutien, his encouragement speeches, uh, his support, his accompanying people, and his lessons in courage, they, we are going to miss those very much. My last word will be for the children and grandchildren of Mr. Mulroney and for this wonderful family, surely, which is surely one of his better a greatest accomplishment. It is with nostalgia that I will think around Christmas to the best wishes card that we received every year. And every year there were more grandchildren being added to the card. We would dream about this love, this such tender love that you lived with Mila. Pascal and I Dear Mila, we, we can imagine how those 51 years of life with Brian Mulroney were filled with love and complicity. Please know that we are hundreds of thousands to share your suffering and your sadness. Thank you, Mila, for what you accomplished. 
with the man of your life. Monsieur Mulroney, demeurez en paix. Mr. Mulroney, please never. remain in, rest in peace. We will we never forget you. We will never forget you. Merci. Good afternoon, and uh, we've had so many wonderful speakers. You're going to figure out who's in politics and which guy is the hockey player real quick. Uh, <laughs> I got to meet the Prime Minister in 1984 when he became the uh, Conservative leader. And a couple years later, he called me and he said, young man, my beautiful wife, wife Mila, wants to have this charity hockey game in Ottawa. And I said, of course. And I go, what's it for? And he said, 65 Roses. Now, I said, I've heard of a lot of charities. I've never heard that name. He goes, no, she changed the name so kids will understand it a lot easier. So I said, of course we'll play. So we go to Ottawa. And the game itself was wonderful because we raised a lot of money and a lot of awareness. But we were so excited to go to 24 Sussex. I'm like, this is incredible. We're going to, I guess, the biggest house in the country. And they were so nice, the family. They hosted us. And then years later, a uh, year later, I'm playing in the Canada Cup. And that, those days, East and the West was a big rivalry. And that afternoon, his chief of staff called me, game three, I was staying with my mom and dad, with my wife, Janet. And he said, the Prime Minister wants to call you. And I said, absolutely. So the phone rang and I turned to my dad and I said, you pick up the phone. So my dad picks up the phone. Now he's talking, talking, talking. And I'm like, okay. And he hands me the phone. And Prime Minister says, obviously, I'm wishing you good luck, son. I hope you guys do well. I hang up the phone, and my dad said, can you imagine the Prime Minister of Canada called me? <laughs> and I said, I don't think he called you. He goes, no, no, I talked to him. <laughs> so we had to wait 15 minutes because he had to call his mother and tell her that he talked to the Prime Minister. So that's how proud of a Canadian he was. Years later, we were at a wedding, and we had the good fortune of sitting with Mila, and uh, the Prime Minister, Janet, and I, and we're at this table, David Foster was one of the great Canadians ever, and we're at this table, and all of a sudden, all these Canadians were flocking over to sit with us, which was really nice. And the Prime Minister kept looking at us, saying, you know, I'm gonna sing tonight, because he loved to sing. I'm gonna sing tonight. I'm like, okay. And then he goes, young man, remember 1993? That was a great victory for the Montreal Canadians, right? And I said, Sir, I was on the other team. <laughs> that wasn't so great for me. He goes, no, no, but it was wonderful for the country. I go, okay, great, good for you. <laughs> so as he's saying, I want to sing tonight, I'm going to sing. Michael Bublé sits down, and I said to Prime Minister, I said, he's singing, you're not. I said, now we're even. <laughs> but, you know, we're such a proud country, and I relate everything to hockey. And politics and hockey, you fight, you battle, you drive. I'm so proud to be a Canadian today to see past prime ministers here, the current prime minister. That's what our country is all about, coming together, being friendly, helping other people, and paying respects. And Mr. Mulroney was one of the greatest prime ministers we've ever had. I always tell my friends around the world, whether it's funerals or weddings, we'd watch on TV and we'd always say, you know what, we're represented by Mila and Brian Mulroney. They make our country proud. Thank you. Danny boy, 
The pipes, the pipes are calling From glen to glen And down the mountainside The summer's gone And all the roses falling Tis you, tis you must go and I must buy. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with Good morning. My name is Tim McBride. And as he is recovering from back surgery, James Baker, the former United States Secretary of State, expresses his regrets that he could not honor his friend Brian Mulroney today as he would have preferred. As a former White House colleague of Secretary Baker's and of President George H.W. Bush, Secretary Baker has asked that I read his message to the Mulroney family and to Canadians in his stead. Secretary Baker writes, Mila and the entire Mulroney family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I deeply regret that I cannot be with you to celebrate the life, accomplishments, and friendship of Brian Mulroney one of the great leaders to walk this good earth. As Canada's Prime Minister, Brian accomplished so much on behalf of his country and the world. He was also brilliant with words. This was a man, after all, who once pithily said, I am not denying anything I did not say. How could anyone argue with that? Possessing a characteristic, upbeat nature, 
that rivaled his two closest American allies, President Ronald Reagan and President George H.W. Bush, Brian was as straightforward and direct about defining his role as Prime Minister as he was at getting things done. As Brian once said, you have to spend your political capital on great causes for your country. And so he did, leaving behind an unrivaled legacy. Brian upheld the interests of Canada with a bold vision, but he also understood the importance of securing mutual benefits that would enhance the prosperity and security of North America through the advancement of free trade. Sadly, today, 36 years after President Reagan and Prime Minister Mulroney signed the U.S.-Canada Free Trade Agreement, support for free trade has been waning in my country and around the world. But in 2019, Brian noted the importance of playing the long game when he quoted Reinhold Niebuhr during remarks at the Baker Institute in Houston. Nothing worth doing is completed in our lifetime, he said. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Brian Mulroney was an inspirational leader and a beautiful human being. And above all, to those of us south of the Canadian border, Brian Mulroney was a friend, a staunch and supportive friend who had the confidence to tell us when he thought a different American approach might serve our country better. We always listened to Brian Mulroney. Ladies and gentlemen, I respected Brian Mulroney. I loved him and will miss him dearly. And I look forward to seeing him again on the other side. My wife Susan and I send our deepest sympathy and love to Mila and the entire Mulroney family. James A. Baker III. Monseigneur Lipin. Monseigneur Lipin. Ladies and gentlemen. For the last few days, Canadians have been able to observe and be able to learn better the Mulroney family. We understand now why Brian Mulroney was to this point devoted to his spouse, Mila as well as to his children, Nicolas, Caroline, Ben, Mark, family. and Nicholas, and their families. We si thank you nous. for being so generous nous with us. We want to share our condolences with en you. Mulroney, je me suis un While preparing this homage to uh, Brian Mulroney, I was remembering an African proverb which says that uh, the birth Brian of each Mulroney child is a mark in history. The so uh, Brian Mulroney's story starts with his Irish roots and Bécomo and Quebec and the construction, the uh, the unfinished building of Canada. All of these, all those stories write his history. We understand that way the love he had for his family, the ambition that he had for his country. Brian Moroni had politics under the skin. From New Brunswick to Nova Scotia, uh, going to Quebec, uh, to the University of Saint Francis Xavier, as well as the Laval University, politics for him was always in the background. It is through politics that he built links and relationships, that he starts new friendships, and that he starts to learn all about his own country. His career as a lawyer in Montreal uh, was a springboard uh, for Brian his political career. And Mila. it is where Brian met Mila, the love of his life. 
Lorsqu'il m'a nommé à son cabinet, il m'a confié. When he named me in his cabinet, he told me that he would never have become a prime minister if he hasn't had the support and the love of his spouse. Elected leader of the Progressive Conservative Party in 1983, Brian Mulroney, challenged its members, instilling discipline and preparing his party to govern. He won two commanding majorities. He was prime minister, he was prime minister, and he would make it count. The Brian Mulroney that we saw from caucus and cabinet was, in the words of Theodore Roosevelt's famous speech of 1910, the man in the arena. Like that man, he was no timid soul who had never known victory or defeat. Brian Mulroney chose to spend his political capital. He took risks and by doing so became one of those rarest of leaders, able to define an era as his own. He would remind us in caucus and cabinet that the number one task of any prime minister was to keep the country united. In 1984, national unity meant that we needed to heal the wounds of the past and initiate constitutional reforms to bring us together. The second most important task of a prime minister was managing Canada's relationship with our neighbours, friends, allies, and in particular with our most important economic partner, the United States. Not an easy challenge for any Prime Minister for whom the neighbour happens to be the world's number one superpower. And so he dared. He dared to defy the long history of Canada and negotiated a free trade agreement with the Americans. And to get this done, he was subjected to the test of a grueling and a punishing election campaign. To win in 1988, he brought together Albertans and Quebecers to support free trade. He did so because he knew that to build a great nation, the bridges between West and East, French and English, newcomers to Canada and the native-born could not and could never be taken for granted. His majority mandates, mandates that came from Canadians, were about change. Canada's economy was in dire need of a conservative overhaul. So, there would be fiscal reform and the GST. I can't think of a more unpopular economic policy than the implementation of the GST. And yet, I can't think of a more popular economic policy with all the prime ministers and governments that followed in the steps of Brian Mulroney. And he would do more. Privatizations, deregulation, expenditure reduction. His government would dismantle the National Energy Program in the West and he'd sign the Atlantic Accord in the East. He concluded the largest land claims agreement in Canadian history and created the territory of Nunavut. One of the biggest issues of our time was the is that of the environment, the pollution, the climate change and energy transition are for our generation issues that are literally existential. To the big Brian surprise Mulroney, of observers in earlier, 
est reconnu comme um, étant Brian le premier Rooney ministre le plus vert de l'histoire du Canada. Uh, he was recognized as the Nous étions parmi les premiers pays au monde à d'un plan vert. We were among Et the first country in the world to have a green plan. And before being uh, elected a prime minister, when he was the leader of the opposition in Ottawa, he talked about uh, acid raids and it was the priority in our relationship with the United States. In 1991, uh, with George Bush, he concluded an agreement uh, on this regard. And it is one of the environment treaty that is the most successful in the world, but it's not the only one. In 1987, his government also negotiated the Montreal Protocol. I was with him at uh, the uh, conferences in Rio in 1992, where uh, Canada was the first country in the G7 to commit uh, to the framework on climate change and biodiversity agreements. More than 40 years ago, Brian Maroney understood that uh, the issue of environment was going to be the issue for his generation and it would also be the responsibility of Canada uh, for future generations. One of the first big accomplishments of Mr. Mulroney in international politics was to bring Quebec through the big door of francophonie to negotiate by negotiating with Pierre Marc Johnson, Premier of Quebec, and François Mitterrand, President of France, the creation of the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie, International Organisation of the Francophonie. Walked amongst the giants of the world. Reagan, Bush, Thatcher, Major, Mitterrand, Cole, Nakassoni, Abdou Diouf, Gorbachev, and others. Canada won a seat on the United Nations Security Council. We embraced peacekeeping. In 1991, Canada went to war, and we fought next to our allies in the Gulf. We played a crucial role as the Berlin Wall fell in a new world, including a new Europe, dawned. We were the first Western nation to recognize a free and proud Ukraine. And in one of his greatest moments, Brian Mulroney united all Canadians with pride and resolve as he and our nation helped Nelson Mandela take the first walk to freedom. His international contributions did not end when he left office. He contributed to is to offer invaluable advice, continue to offer invaluable advice and support to his successors. In the last weeks of his life, he entered the arena a final time, defending Israel and fighting anti-Semitism in a compelling speech he delivered in New York. L'aile parlementaire de son parti avait un rendez-vous tous les mercredis pour une réunion du caucus national. Had a meeting every Wednesday le moment for le plus national attendu meeting. était la prise de parole. The moment that was uh, the the most the moment he was awaiting was when the leader would speak. We were alone with him. Il passa en revue des événements politiques de la dernière semaine. He would review semaine. political events of the previous week and he would si tell us là, about meetings with the greatest of this world just as if we were there with him. Uh, in the room. He would also review his next meeting, his upcoming meetings. He would share, uh, and sometimes he would talk about what was most uh, precious to him, his hopes, his joys, and also his disappointments. He knew how to make us laugh and how to make us cry. He would talk about his family. He talked about his ambitions, his project, his vision for the country. He would never miss an opportunity to tell us that he believed in us and that he loved us. And suddenly, the shadows of the bad uh, polls 
would disappear, and suddenly it was bright sunshine for us. The Right Honorable Brian Mulroney treated his political opponents with respect. He did not view them as enemies. They were opponents, but most importantly, they were also Canadian patriots. Brian Mulroney had and was, and as was said, a hero named Thomas Darcy McGee, who when he passed away was described as having a heart made for friendship. Much has been said and reported about how Brian Mulroney would reach out to other people. And I know that there's not a person in this basilica today whose life has not been touched by Brian. I'll predict this. We will not have enough of our lifetime to hear all of the stories about when he reached out to friends, opponents, and people he had never met. He wanted to share with them what he knew to be true, that whatever the circumstances, things will come to pass. And as they strive to reach that day, they knew from having spoken to him that they were not alone and that they had his support and his friendship. For all of us who served under him, MPs, ministers, political staff, organizers, and public servants who he respected highly, there was no other place that we would have wanted to be. Here, now, at this very moment, we live in a world that he helped shape. We live in the country that he helped build. And because of Brian Mulroney, we live in one of the greatest countries in the world, Canada. So on this day, Canadians pay their respect and express their very deep gratitude to one of Canada's greatest prime ministers, and one of Canada's true nation builders, Brian Mulroney. Commenceront les beaux jours 
Mais nous serons morts, mon frère. Quand les hommes vivront d'amour, Il n'y aura plus de misère Peut-être songeront-ils un jour À nous qui serons morts, mon frère Nous qui aurons mauvais jour Dans la haine et dans la guerre Cherchez la paix, cherchez l'amour Qu'ils connaîtront alors mon frère Dans la grande chaîne de la vie Pour qu'il y ait un meilleur temps Il faut toujours quelques perdants La sagesse, ici bas, c'est le prix. Quand les hommes vivront d'amour, il n'y aura plus de misère. Et commenceront les beaux jours. Mais nous, nous serons morts. Please rise. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sins against you. Montre-nous, Seigneur, ta miséricorde. Show Lord, your misericordia, and give, you, give us a heart May God Almighty uh, forgive our sins and lead us to eternal life. Prions le Seigneur. Let's pray the Lord. Seigneur Dieu, tu es miséricorde pour les pécheurs. Lord, you are misericordia for all sinners. 
you are joy for all the things. Since we are celebrating today our humanity and the funerals of your servant Brian Mulroney, please give him, we pray, the happiness that you give to the chosen ones. Freed from the bonds of mortality, it may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. My soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, gone is my glory and my expectation from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continuously thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. The word of the Lord. de la première lettre de Saint Jean. Reading from the first letter of Saint Jean. Que nous sommes passés de la mort Beloved, à la vie parce que nous know that we pass from death to life celui qui because pas we love each other. Demeure dans la mort. Anyone who does not love Voici remains nous avons in death. Lui, This is how Jésus, we know what love is. A donné sa vie pour Jesus nous. Christ laid nous down his life for us. Nous devons donner notre vie pour nos frères. And we ought to celui lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has a material possession and see a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? 
Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts to rest in the presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. These are the words of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Dear family of Brian Mulroney, you have lost a, a husband, a father, and a grandfather. Dear friends of Brian, you have lost a mentor and a brother. All of Canada, including Canadians from all walks of life and elected officials, past and present, share your grief and have made it their own. Throughout the past week, thousands of people traveled to pay their respects to Brian Mulroney, lying in state, they expressed their condolences and gratitude, and they paid their respects. And you, dear family, made yourself available 
and receive them unfailingly for ours. Media across the country accompanied this procession of sadness and consolation. They collected and broadcast people's countless expressions of affection and their touching stories about Brian Monroney's words and actions. Today, media brings us together again. Aimons par des actes et en vérité. With acts and truth, what is happening in our life is important. Successes and failures, joys and sadness, love and loneliness, health and sickness, the uh, gratitude and humiliation. All of this is part of our life, and it is important, particularly for the life of a person who spent their life in politics and gave their life to politics. But without diminishing what precedes, there is something that is more important. It is the question, what will I become through what is happening to me? Through success, will I continue to be generous with my time and my attentions to others? Through failure and humiliation, will I continue to be a good person and kind? That who communicate nicely with all my family and the people around me through my worries? Will I continue to have a heart that is available to love, to listening, and to service? This kindness, this attention to other people, whoever they may be, this sense of our common humanity, this perseverance in the pursuit of harmony have their roots in Brian's mother and his family and define the man as he was before, during, and after his life in politics. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Every human life is an unfinished symphony. Our deepest aspirations, our thirst for beauty, goodness, truth, and unity will find their fulfillment in the kingdom of eternal love that God is preparing for us. We are asked in this life to fight the good fight of fidelity to righteousness, love, truth, and to what is just and good. Heureux les artisans de paix. Those who build peace, may they be happy. Family man, a man who was devoted to his roots and to peace in his life, Brian leaves a legacy of values who are forever and values that we need to continue to revive. The generosity of his family, the gratitude of the state, and all of the citizens transform the death of Brian Maroney and his funeral, an event, an event that gathers us with everything that makes us similar and everything that makes us different. Tomorrow we can go back to our everyday life, but at the same time, we have this opportunity to enrich our lives by thinking more 
to our of our duty to humanity to just and to justice. At a time when polarization and war, concern for the environment, health and the future, and threats to life and the family are present on our planet. We have the opportunity, if we so wish, to grow through our service to the common good. From village to village, town to town, province to province, we share a country with a vast territory and resources. Ours is a welcoming land, and our greatest wealth will always lie in families, people, and education. Our ends may be cold, but our hearts are always warm. Cher famille de Brian Mulroney. Dear family of Brian Mulroney, your kindness and your generosity testify to the fact that inheriting those values is always possible, even if it's very demanding at times. May God provide a bomb for your heart. May he protect you and may he guide you. May Jesus, who is kind and humble in his heart, teach us to be the builder of peace that the world needs. God, who is full of mercy, we put in your hands Brian, our spouse, our father, our grandfather, our brother, and our friend. Dieu le Père Tout-Puissant qui a ressuscité um, pray, des morts, son pray fils unique, Jésus-Christ. Uh, Lord Almighty, unissons-nous les uns aux autres is, uh, pour prier pour Brian Moroni. Jesus, let's uh, gather together to pray for Brian Moroni for our country and for the world. After each invocation, Seigneur, we, we can say Lord, together, Lord, listen to us. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear us. Pour Brian Mulroney. Qui dans le baptême a reçu la For Brian Mulroney, who in baptism received the light of Christ, de Dieu, may he be admitted to the kingdom of God for eternal life. Let's pray the Lord. Lord, listen to us. The family and friends of Brian Mulroney are in sadness and sorrow. Bring them comfort, consolation in their grief, and soothing of the heart. Let us pray. Pour ceux et celles qui souffrent et sont découragés. For those who suffer and are discouraged. For all the people who are living in loneliness, who in our society, may we learn to live with the generous compassion and let's pray the Lord. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show them your tenderness to those who suffer unjustly and transform us into instruments of justice and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, you listen in love to the cry of everyone. Hear our prayers for our departed brothers and sisters. Give them the pardon they have always desired. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands hand, for the praise, the praise and the glory of his name, for the good and the good of the Holy Church. So approach of your servant, Brian Mulroney, Seigneur, we pray. Uh, be close to your servant, Brian Mulroney, O oh Lord, we pray you. It is uh, for him that today, on his funeral day, we give you the sacrifice, we reconcile this with this. Uh, if there was any sin, if there was any human fallibility, may your kindness forgive him through our Lord. The Lord be with you and with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift, lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, is right, right and just. just. Vraiment, il est juste et bon pour ta gloire et notre salut. It is true and kind for your glory and our savings to give us your eternal grace everywhere. O Father, O eternal God, through Christ our Lord, it is through whom that we had the hope of resurrection. Here, the law of death is a problem. The promise of immortality is a consolation. Life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. C'est pourquoi nous te supplions, Seigneur, de consacrer. It is why we pray, Lord, uh, to give yourself uh, these offerings that we are bringing. Please sanctify them through your Spirit so that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who told us to celebrate. The night where he was surrendered, he took the bread, he read the prayer, he broke bread and gave it to his disciples by saying, take and eat all, this is my body for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Il est grand le mystère de la foi. It is the great mystery of the faith. We announce your death, Lord Jesus. We are proclaiming the resurrection. We are waiting for you coming in glory. The memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Regarde, nous t'en prions, l'oblation de ton Église est de reconnaître ton Fils qui, selon ta volonté, s'est offert en sacrifice pour nous réconcilier avec toi. Quand nous serons nourris de son corps et de son sang, et nous serons nourris de son sang, When we will be fed with his body and his blood, and we will be filled with the Holy Spirit, please let us be one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints at whose counters intercession In your presence, we rely for unfailing help. And now we pray, Lord, by the sacrifice that reconciles us with you. Let's salute peace in the world. Let's affirm your church on earth in faith and charity. With our, your servant, the Pope Francis, and the Christian Lepin, as well as all the Archbishop and the priest, and the entire population that you saved. Listen in your bounty, the prayer of your family that you gathered right here in front of you, in your mercy, bring to you, loving Father, all your children. Remember your servant Brian Mulroney, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. Souviens-toi aussi de nos frères et sœurs défunts. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have died. Remember all those who have left this world and will find grace in front of you. In your kindness, please receive them in your kingdom, where we all hope to live in your glory together and in eternity, when you will wipe the tears from our faces. By seeing you, Lord, as you are, We will be like you eternally and without end. We will sing your praise through our Lord Christ, through whom you give this world all grace and kindness. Through him, to you, Almighty Lord, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, all honor and all glory for centuries and centuries. Amen. Unis dans le même esprit, nous pouvons dire avec confiance. All united in the same spirit, we can say together the prayer that we have received from our Savior, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now, now and forever. Seigneur Jésus Christ, tu as dit à tes apôtres, je vous Lord Jesus Christ, paix, we say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lived and reigned forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. watching the state funeral for former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney taking place in Notre Dame Basilica in Montreal a crowd of 1600 roughly invited guests and the rite of communion is now underway this is a Catholic service of course uh, Brian Mulroney raised an Irish Catholic and that's what we've seen uh, throughout the, the funeral service so far, led by the Archbishop of Montreal. And with me here in Montreal is Senator Pamela Wallen and our reporter Eric Sorensen, National Affairs Correspondent. We've been watching the funeral as you have at home. Uh, we're told it's going, in incidentally, about 28 minutes longer than we had been told it would, uh, that these things happen. And uh, also, it was a very snowy day here, so the arrival perhaps was, it was a, little a little bit late. Yeah, and yeah, getting all the guests in and, and communion for that many people and can take a while. Yes. Uh, yes. In church. So while communion is underway, we're just going to talk a little bit about what we've seen and heard so far. And I think what it was the eulogies that struck me the most. Oh, stunning! Certainly. And and the first one came from Ryan Mulroney's only daughter, Caroline. And it was it was personal, deeply yes. personal, more personal than I was expecting. You know, he, she said not a day went by that he didn't talk to the kids. And what what parents have not lived yes. apart from their kids and thought to themselves, I, I, I was not that good at that. Yeah, no, and they, they all say that this is exactly wherever he was, whatever he was doing, there was a call. Um, and she was she really touched all the bases. It was she was so poised. It was unbelievable. But she talked about um, the humor, which is because her father loved to give a speech and was so good at it and that he was going to that big political rally in the sky that perhaps he should be buried with his podium <laughs> so that he would be able to give a speech. But she also talked very personally about um, the belief that I think this family and many Canadians have that there was a destiny 
uh, for Brian Mulroney and that young boy from Bay Como to become the Prime Minister, to do what he did to make this country new. I, I referred to him before as kind of a modern founding father of a new Canada because that's what happened with the free trade agreement and so many things. And she touched on all those points. It was very poignant. She said, you know, destiny called to my father. Right. And there were some trials and tribulations, certainly yep. during his prime ministership. But he, uh, and she said that, you know, he didn't care for polls, but he liked headlines sometimes. <laughs> he liked and, headlines. and over these last three weeks, you know, <laughs> yes, he would have these loved headlines this would have pleased him. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what struck me too is that she talked about that the final day, and, yes, and that was what was so moving right at the end, yeah. right? It, she kept, she held it together. She got, you could tell the emotion was creeping in, but she held it together, talking about all of the children got there. Yes, yeah. yes, and and that uh, her mother's last words, yeah, final with, words with Ryan, which, which were, is I'll try and yeah. I'll try and stay for you, yeah. but they're in. I plan to. Yeah, I plan, I plan to. to. He's in their heart, and we can see that because. Mm -hmm. They, all of these kids, through the last couple of weeks, have been so um, elegant in their praise of their father and the importance of family that it played. As we watch, I was just going to point out, we're watching people um, receive communion here, and the family members are in the, the first pew, um, all of them. So, Brian's wife, Mila, who was, they've been married for 51 years. Yeah. Four children, their spouses, and 16 grandchildren, all there. All big families. All four kids have, have you know, big oh, families, yes, three, big four, families. or five children Absolutely. each. Absolutely, because that's how they grew up and that's what they love. Uh, I was and just noticing. I was just going to point oh. out, before we get move away from the granddaughters, we're going to hear from yes. one of the granddaughters who is going to uh, perform uh, coming up. Um, she is Caroline's daughter, yeah. and she... Uh, Often sang with her grandfather. Yes, Elizabeth Theodora Lapham. Yep. So the, we're, we're, when she comes up to sing, we will uh, we will stop talking. But go ahead, Pam. No, I was just going to say when Carolyn was speaking, you could see just under her hair a, a brooch, and I just wanted to talk about that for a moment. This is a very European tradition, and Vanessa was very much involved in this. But they commissioned a jeweler, a well-known jeweler, Miles Mindham, in Toronto to create this pin and the men of the family are all wearing a, a small version of it and the women have this larger version and it's it's about love and roots and heritage a huge maple leaf a fleur de lis, fleur de lis and then a shamrock so it represents his roots his heritage and his love of country um, it's a beautiful tradition yeah yeah Caroline said uh, you know we are heartbroken by his loss and then she said I miss you, Daddy. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. uh, there isn't a, a father moment. in the country that just didn't yeah. well up at that Ab moment. Yeah. Absolutely. And then we saw the, the Prime, Prime Minister. Minister. Yeah. Who, 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 it wasn't a eulogy. It wasn't It wasn't billed as a eulogy. No, no. It was an address. Yeah. But, the, well, but we know that he is close to the family, that he certainly respected Brian Mulroney. He, he turned to him for advice. Recently turned to him for advice yes. when he was renegotiating NAFTA. And they did have conversations. He even revealed in his in his address today that um, Brian Mulroney had called his mother, yeah. Margaret Trudeau, over the years. And, 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 and Justin didn't know about it. But wasn't surprised by it. Yeah. 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 Honestly, I wonder sometimes how he got everything done because he was constantly on the phone. He worked for the first That's been the amazing thing that, I, that I've learned in these last few weeks. Like, I've followed his career, I covered him. Had no idea that there was that ex to that extent Those he reached out. Those phone calls went on at 11 o'clock at night, and he worked his yeah. way west okay. to deal with the time zone. He realized, <laughs> I think, that that, I that it mattered to people. Yeah. Let's listen in now to the granddaughter. Je vais chanter. Je vais chanter. I am going to sing. I am sorry. I am going to sing the song. Thank you. Thank you. Je vais chanter la chanson préférée de mon grand-père. I am going to sing my favorite, my grandfather's favorite song. Que 
That was a beautiful performance by Elizabeth Theodora Lapham, Lapham, the granddaughter of Brian Mulroney, 18 years old. It was difficult when she first got up there, but she, she made it through singing her grandfather's favorite song, a song by Henri Betty and Edith Piaf. The crowd gave her applause just for being up yes. there. So brave, and she got her singing chops from Grandpa. It she most like. certainly yeah. did, and they sang together yeah. regularly. Let's listen in again. Such power in your smile. Sure, a stone you'll beguile, so there's never a teardrop should fall. With your sweet lilting laughter, and your sun fairy song, and your eyes twinkle bright as can be. So just laugh all the while, and all other times smile, and now smile a smile for me. Eyes are smiling, short as like a morning spring. In the lift of Irish laughter, we can hear the angels sing. When Irish hearts are happy, all the world seems bright and gay. And when Irish eyes are smiling, sure they steal your heart away. That last little voice you may have recognized singing When Irish Eyes Are Smiling, that was the voice of Brian Mulroney. He recorded about a dozen songs. Yes. Mila said, you know, you should do this for the grandchildren, and yep. so he did. And, uh, and he gave it to others, wonderful. people whose family yeah. members loved him. He handed out these CDs, but that was a moment because we have all heard him do that. You know, he sang Paper Doll is one he liked, and it was one that he recorded. It's one that Michael Bublé recorded as yeah. well. And I think they sang together that song the last time they spoke. There's a moment of silence. Let's observe that.
Please rise. Avant de nous séparer, nous allons dire ensemble un dernier Before adieu. Before we part, notre frère we are going Brian. to say together a Avec last farewell to our brother Brian. La With respect and affection, éternel, let's give him to the misery of the eternal Father, Christ, hoping to find each other again when the love of Christ, which will vanquish over all evil, will vanquish death. At everything we live with Brian, at who he is for us, and at who he is for God. Time has come now to commend the soul of Brian Melroney to God, who will now incense his body, which was the temple of the Holy Spirit, and sprinkle it with the water of baptism as a reminder of our faith in the resurrection. Please be seated.
and you're watching the state funeral for former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney now coming to a close. That's Carolyn Mulroney, his daughter, only daughter, and Ben Mulroney thanking some of the guests who have come and a kiss for his father's casket. This is such a gathering of the political players. Mila Mulroney thanking the Archbishop. Dear guests, please rise and now the, for the national, national anthem. anthem of Canada. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Que toute marque d'affection, tout geste d'amitié que vous donnerez soit pour And we are approaching the end of the state funeral for Brian Mulroney. This is the recession. And we're going to hear another song at this point. I think a, a, what will be yet another very poignant song, We'll Meet Again. So let's listen for that. And there is the, uh, the RCMP pallbearers who carried the casket into 
Notre Dame Cathedral in Montreal for the state funeral. They're now preparing to carry it away out of the basilica on to a private burial, which will be, you know, after sharing all their, their grief, sharing all of this with, with the gathered guests at the basilica and all the people who have come to pay respects over the last four days, this is coming down to a very personal moment for this family. It's a final act of generosity on the part of this family to, to share this experience with uh, the public people who knew him, people who worked with him, people who had no idea who he was but who lived in the Canada that he created. And uh, I think this is very special for the family to do this. It's a rare moment, state funerals in Canada, right? In fact, Justin Trudeau said the last time he spoke in this basilica was for his own father's. When, 20, 20 years ago. When John Turner don't passed away, where, it was, of course, during COVID, so there was no wasn't it, they weren't able to yes, have we'll the same kind of again, Brian some sunny day. This is Brian. This yep. is Brian Mulroney singing We'll Meet Again. Keep smiling through what? just like you always do. Till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away. So will you Say hello to the folks that I know. Tell them I won't be long. They'll be happy to know that as you saw me go, I was singing this song. We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day Well, that was quite a moment. It Brian Mulroney really singing himself out of his own funeral. And it also <laughs> lifted the spirit. This is where the celebration of life comes in, a beautiful touch at the end of this. Ben, ben uh, said that uh, he considered himself a frustrated saloon singer. <laughs> and uh, we did a story this week where we learned so much more about his love of singing and how much it was a part of his life. And uh, by the end of it, I thought, you know, you put a microphone in Brian Mulroney's hand, and it's hard to know what he preferred more, to, to make a speech or sing a song. <laughs> to sing a song. I, w I, I might put money on the latter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and though it, was, it felt a little uplifting and, and even a little funny, you can't help but think that Brian Mulroney looking down would be smiling at oh, that yes. moment. Yet difficult for the family, I think, right? You saw yeah. some uh, real tears there because to hear their father's grandfather's voice, voice. merely hear her husband's voice in this setting. They'll be so happy to have that. Oh yeah. yes, I think, I think yeah. that'll be uh, marked at remembrances for many years yet. The family's very close. They, um, the Prime Minister actually died on February 29th, which is a leap year, so the family has been discussing the day that they will mark it, you know, because... I hadn't thought of that, yeah. yes. Every, so, four, every fourth every year. I, I think it'll be more often than that. I, I think it'll, we'll be seeing this, uh, because they're very tight-knit, they're very close, so there'll be birthdays, there'll be anniversaries, and everyone was preparing to mark all the, the anniversaries, 40 years, uh, you know, yeah. all of those things. Yeah. I think, I think, and I missed think, his birthday by just a few days. We, you know, and I think I think Canadians, many Canadians, have heard more about what a, what a father he was and what a friend he yeah. was, and made and thought to themselves, I can be better. I can reach out yeah. to people too that I should reach out to. I can do more to stay in touch with family and for and to and with people 
who need a little bit of a boost. Yeah, those, he, rec he recognized the, his capacity to make a difference in people's lives. Those random acts of, of kindness, Jean Charest was talking about it, that none of us would live long enough to list them all. Uh, because everybody has a story and we all have been touched by that. I remember a, a very tough time during my life and we were at a dinner and Brian Mulroney stopped at my table and asked me to stand and just so that people would see that he was recognizing, recognizing that. Just had quieter moments, quieter mm -hmm. moments as well. The bells are going to toll 18 times now, honouring the fact that the Right Honourable Brian Mulroney was the 18th Prime Minister of Canada as the pallbearers prepare to carry the casket out of Notre Dame Cathedral. When, uh, when he left office, he was the fifth longest serving Prime Minister. He has been passed by Jean Chrétien and been passed by Stephen Harper. And later this summer, he will be passed by yep. Justin Trudeau. So he will become the eighth longest serving, but uh, Trudeau is getting up there. And it is interesting how recent prime ministers have kind of had about that eight, nine year yeah. mark and the Canadian public sort of yeah. says, yeah. yeah, time for change. Time for change. And I think, and I think Justin yeah. Trudeau is probably noting that, but he's, I think he's also noting what he talked about, which was uh, that he was talking, that the, Mr. Mulroney talked about getting the big things right. And yeah. he talked about it these past weeks, and he talked about it again today, mm -hmm. and you wonder if it isn't making him think about the carbon tax and something like that, where he wonders if his legacy will be better served, not caving into the pressure of the moment. I or, wondered that too, <laughs> listening, yeah. listening to Justin Trudeau, I thought, how much has he been reflecting on his own? Yeah. Well, his own leadership, his own style, and what he wants to do. What he's the, been yeah, saying the mark that in the interviews that you have to live through the tougher times. Today, I think is is remembering uh, because he and Ben are friends. They're you know of the same age and remembering what it's like to go through this process. But you can't help as you stand there. It was really the prime minister's uh, political career. This prime minister uh, that was. Uh, launched at his father's funeral where people said his that eulogy. his eulogy yeah. to his father so this is uh, this is a day filled with symbolism and it is most definitely a time for reflection on what your legacy will be and what you want it to be and how much you can do to actually shape that I've wondered too about how um, people in politics who are elected now um, have been watching this unfold, hearing all the stories about Brian Mulroney, and let's face it, lots of people who are now elected wouldn't have known him, wouldn't right. have known these stories, or maybe, as you said, Eric, thinking about how they approach what they do, right, and how they interact, and not just interact with the people who are within their own party and think the same as them or believe in the same things, but also reach across the aisle, right? And, 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 and form allegiances and friendships that 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 exist. Yes, that exist beyond partisanship, yeah. right? And, and prime ministers can have an effect on people beyond their yeah. years in office. I, you know, I, I saw a young fellow. He couldn't have been more than about I don't know, nineteen twenty. He went to see the casket and uh, Mr. Mulroney lying in repose. And I asked him. I said, Why? Why? Why did you? Go? You you weren't around when he yes. was around. He said uh, he wants to be a history teacher, and he's been studying the biography of yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mulroney, and he thinks that what he achieved and what he did should be part of the curriculum and, and it, indeed it will be because you cannot go back to the 1980s and the early 90s and not Without, have no, big, big pieces of Canadian history. Yeah, the country changed profoundly with free trade. I mentioned this before in terms of our attitudes, right? We were, we were a country that kind of had a bit of a chip on its shoulder that didn't believe in our own strength and our own ability uh, to become a player and he changed that uh, and you heard the words from um, Tim McBride today who delivered the words of James Baker on his behalf talking about how he influenced politics on both sides of the border yeah. made the case for why Canada wanted to have the free trade agreement but also made the case for why it was good for America yeah and then on the other stories that flowed from that um, South of the border, he said he was a friend. And, yes. uh, and, and others, like almost everyone who spoke about him politically, talked about uh, that he was willing to spend his political capital yep. to do big things. Yeah.
because it did cost him everything politically to take these uh, things on. But you know, he's remembered in my part of the country, you know, the national energy plan that was imposed by Pierre Elliott Trudeau, when he undid that, it was, it was bringing the West back into confederation, into this country. There were many, there were many wounds that he healed in a very uh, particular way with that generosity of spirit, with that openness to say, we've got to change how we, how we do politics in this country, and he did. We talked about how, you know, he learned on the go, uh, and no government has done enough towards Indigenous people in this right. country. But he evolved on that, where he was managing, you know, Indian affairs in one sense yep. in his early years, but by his last years, he wanted to, he saw that there was a need for yep. self-government. He began to sign land claims with the Gwich'in up in the Northwest Territories, and as uh, Jean Charest pointed out, uh, it was his government's negotiation with the people of uh, what became Nunavut in the Eastern yeah, Arctic. Absolutely. The Inuit, that... Uh, and they remember. They, and they, they settled that land claim and they uh, voted overwhelmingly in favor of it. And that was nation building. There's a... Bells are tolling now. The families saying their goodbyes. There's a 19-gun salute underway as well. The family now leaving the Basilica on their way to the private burial. funeral for former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney, 18th Prime Minister of Canada, is now coming to a close. I must say the Montreal Symphony Orchestra was just stunning at this funeral today, as was the chorus in the Basilica. Just beautiful and the tenors, music. And, and the, the granddaughter. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and the eulogies. I yes. mean, all of it was just so well done. Well, you know, I was actually surprised by Wayne Gretzky. He was so funny and so authentic. He just got up there without a note, without told notes. stories. Yeah. And I think those are the kinds of wonderful tributes because he talked about his father taking the phone and then the father bragging that the Prime Minister had called him. <coughs> and there are thousands of Canadians who have a story just like that. Yeah. You're watching the 19-gun salute that is underway. Royals get the 21-gun salute. This is a state funeral. In Canada, so it's a 19-gun salute, the casket there on the hearse, and we'll be driving off shortly for the private burial. And Eric, this we've talked before, this isn't a scene that we witness often in Canada. We don't, I, I don't have experience of having um, hosted a state funeral before. It's, you, it is a moment, a, a page turning in history. You are moved by this, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and you realize that when we lived our lives, when he was Prime Minister, in our case, we had the privilege of, of covering him on a day-to-day -day news basis, uh, and, and you think not much further about it than that. But as time goes on, you realize now, uh, with his passing, 
We were witnessing history. He is an historic figure in this country, Brian Mulroney. And we forget that sometimes, how lucky we are to be witness to history. Yeah. I was sitting with from friends last night who said, tell me more, tell me what he was like, tell me what the days there we don't appreciate sometimes uh, in the world that I used to live in, that you two are still in, uh, that we have a very special vantage point on these great moments and these great people that whatever you think of the politics have made such an incredible sacrifice and contribution as have their families so that Canada moves yeah. uh, and continues to grow. That's, uh, we've always got to thank the families that we saw there today because um, they give too, they share too. Well, I would like to thank both of you, Senator Pamela Wallen. Thank you so much for Great spending time with us. pleasure to be here today. It was my pleasure as well. And Eric Sorensen, thanks. My pleasure to be uh, with both of you. Yeah. It was, uh, as I say, a wonderful day. And thank you all for watching at home the state funeral for former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. I'm Donna Fries, and I'll see you this evening for a special edition of Global National from Montreal. first lessons would be that winning is important and it's okay to enjoy it. However, winning for winning's sake cannot be the only end game. When Irish hearts are happy, all the world seems bright and gay.